Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part of my dialing in series for the Line 6 Helix. I've recently had a whole lot of requests um, to do sort of specific dialing in videos for a lot of the overdrive pedals that we have in the Helix. And I figured I'll chip away at these over the next little while. I have done some in the past. I think when, I think it was firmware 2.8 came out, I did one for the, the Tone Sovereign Air Apparent and the Diana Drive, uh, some of my favorites. But recently I did a video called My Top 5 Favorite Overdrive Pedals that got a lot of great responses. and sparked a lot of folks asking about sort of more specific dialing in series for the overdrive pedal. So I'm going to add some of these in here periodically and hopefully you guys enjoy that. Today I chose one of my top five from the uh, my top five overdrive pedal models and it's the valve driver which is a model of the Chandler tube driver. This has always been a real favorite of mine and there's there's a lot of great sounds in here. Um, really depending, as with a lot of overdrive pedals, what amp we use it with or pair it with. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different and hopefully interesting and hopefully eye-opening um, in using it with numerous amps and comparing those as well as taking a look at the parameters, not that many parameters on this, but what they kind of do and, and, and uh, the sort of extremes uh, what they sound like at the, the parameter extremes, so we kind of have a better idea going into it what this pedal is capable of. So without further ado, let's go over to HX Edit and take a look. So here's what I've done. I have created my, um, my template, or I've loaded my template in there. I have turned off, and in fact, I'm just going to remove it altogether. I usually, have, as most people know that watch my channel, I use the LA Studio Comp at the end. Uh, not that I don't want it there or don't like it there, but uh, I don't want any compression coming anywhere in the chain to kind of take away from the potential compression we hear from the overdrive pedal. I mean, it could go there. It's probably not going to make that big a deal and it's kind of splitting hairs at this point, but I'll get rid of it just so that we're hearing just the compression characteristics of adding more gain from the valve driver, okay? Now, if you'll notice here, I have some settings on it already. Five on gain, five on bass, three on treble, and level on six. Um, you know, on, that's what I kind of, in my messing around, settled on here. And we'll remember those settings and come back to them. Let's also take a look at what else I've done here, though. I've set up three snapshots. One's uh, called Marshall, one called Fender, one called Matchless. And I have a uh, Brit Trim Norm amp with these settings, okay? Uh, I have with a 412 Greenback 25. I have a second snapshot with the Tweed Blues Norm with a 410 Tweed P10R. Uh, and then I have a third snapshot with a Matchstick Channel 1 with a 212 Match H30. And you know what I've set up here is a 121 ribbon on the Matchstick. Uh, on the Fender amp is a 121 ribbon, but on the, the Brit Trim, I was liking it with the, the 57, which I don't use very often, but it wasn't about getting these um, different amps to sound even close to the same. It was more just about getting a sound that I was kind of like, wow, oh, this, is, this is cool. I really spent no time on it. I pulled it up, I made a couple tiny adjustments, and I went, okay, these tones are cool. Uh, here's the Marshall tone I chose, here's the Fender tone I chose, here's the Matchless tone I, tone I chose, and I'll see what sort of the same settings on the tube driver do with each. But let's first of all do this. Let's take a listen to what the sound of each of these uh, different amps are without the tube driver engaged. So first here's the Marshall setting. <laughs> Over to the Fender. And finally the Matchless. All of them kind of on the edge of breakup. Probably the Matchless being a little bit cleaner, but again, it wasn't about that. It was just more about seeing what slapping a certain setting on an overdrive pedal, in this case a tube driver, is going to sound like in front of three different rigs. All right, so here we are back with the Marshall amp, and this was kind of my, maybe I'll say my favorite pairing for the, the, the tube driver. Really pairs up nice with this, and I was liking the tones I got, but here's the first thing we'll do. We'll kind of remember my settings here, five on gain, five on bass, three on treble, level on six. But what I want to do is I'm going to actually set everything up the middle, and I'm going to bring the gain down to zero and just sort of hear what happens here. Now, you'll notice we don't really have any sound at all. So I'm gonna roll this in to one. Really still very little going on. Roll it into two. Okay, we finally have some sound back. Now let's turn that off. 
we notice it's quieter than the actual amp. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna bring this level up to maybe eight and a half. So we're somewhat in the same ballpark with the overdrive pedal on or off. Now you'll notice the tone characters. Here's it with it off. There's a nice beef to the sound. With it on. At these settings, it kind of thins it out. It adds a tiny bit more hair. Much more high end to it. Um, I don't know if I really like it like that per se. Uh, it's adding a tiny bit more distortion, but it's more acting as a tone shaper here, which is kind of interesting because this is one way we can use overdrive pedals. To just bring the overdrive in so it's almost not affecting how much uh, overdrive we're getting out of the amp, but more just to use the tone control. So let's see what these tone controls do. First of all, let's do this. Let's bring the treble all the way down to zero and the bass all the way down to zero. See what happens. Quite thin, not very pleasant. Let's roll the bass in to let's say five. Let's go to the extreme on it. I always like to go to the extremes of settings to hear what happens when we go out to kind of the outer limits, right? What characteristics come into it. So that really fattens it up compared to it off. Come back to maybe seven, seven and a half. Bring it back to maybe five. Again, acting more as a tone shaper. Beefy. Okay, we'll bring the bass down to zero and now we'll go treble up to five. As to be expected, it's thinning it out. Let's go up to 10 with it. Pretty ratty, but that's to be expected with those extreme settings. So we'll go back to zero. Now let's do this. I was kind of liking this when we brought the bass into five. Put it off. But that is darkening it up. So let's roll a little bit of treble in, maybe just a couple. Okay, so we'll leave it there for now. Uh, this is with it off. So we can see we can use it as just a tone shaper if we want with very subtle difference to the overdrive. But now let's leave those settings and see what happens as we bring the gain up. Let's move from two up to let's say four. <laughs> It starts to darken up a little bit more. Let's go to five.
I'm gonna bring this in now back up to maybe three. Just add a little more bite to it. Now let's go to a real extreme on the gain. I really find as we go up, the, the, the notes really start to compress on the pick attack. And maybe it's more of a feel thing. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but let's go all the way up to 10 here. Something like that. <laughs> I find that gain setting a little heavy handed, but let's come back to maybe, I don't know, five. <laughs> I am not disliking that at all. Some folks might that find that a little dark. It really depends on what you want, right? I mean, you could always bring this up and just flatten them all to five. <laughs> go a little bit darker on this and I, like I said let's bring this back to six I believe these were the settings I had when we started off <laughs> let's actually go up to four here <laughs> I'm liking that tone all right let me save that now with those same settings, let's hear how that compares if we take that Chandler tube driver with those exact same settings and plumb it into the Fender Tweed Blues Norm. And that's gonna sound like this. And really listen to how the overdrive characters completely change and sound much more like the amp that they're with. <laughs> Fender. The Marshall has that smooth, creamy, searing tone. The Fender, much like Fenders do, kind of a, a, a loose bottom end with a little rattiness on top. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it really does take on the characteristics of the amp it's with. So the same settings on the tube driver, but completely different outcome depending on the amp and tone we're using it with. <laughs> to be expected, right? I mean, it is going to be a different, totally different amp, but a lot of times I think we could get sort of pigeonholed into thinking like, well, this distortion has this characteristic all the time, but it's not so much. It's going to really depend on the amp we use it with, right? Um, now, I also have the matchless tone. Um, so here is what that sounds like. <laughs> That with the fan, the uh, Marshall, sorry. Fender. 
Fender. Let's go a little bit back to back on each of them. Again, you know, very usable tones, all of them, but very different tones, all with the same settings on the overdrive pedal. So it's a little bit of food for thought to think, you know, we can get a lot of different sounds of these overdrive pedals depending on what we pair them up with. But I think it's important to do what we did today where to go into the extremes of the different parameters on the particular, you know, effect module we're using or distortion pedal, whatever it might be, and sort of see what those extreme settings do. Put that away in our memory bank so that next time we're in the need for something like that, we can kind of get there a lot quicker, right? So I don't know. I hope you guys found that enjoyable. I hope it was interesting. Uh, I found it really fun to, to mess with these with different amps and it's good experiments you can do on your own as well with different models as well to sort of see what sounds uh, like what you want, you're hearing in your head and what you need to come out of your your monitoring system. So uh, it's going to be very different depending on the guitar you're using. I'm using my Godin Stadium here with single coil pickups, single coil Godin pickups. This guitar is fabulous. You know, Godin does such a great job making these amazing instruments at such reasonable price points and it just plays like a dream. I haven't even touched my, my much more expensive telly since I've got it. I've been playing this a lot and just really enjoying what I'm getting out of it. So check the folks over at Godin out. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it was useful and mildly entertaining at the at bare minimum. Um, please like the video, share it if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I thank you so much for your time, and uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be back soon with some more content real soon. Ciao for now.